when he turned his back from shoulder to shoulder it looked like as wide as the tailgate of a truck and this darkness literal darkness just came like all over just just all over me except where i was standing this thing let out the most blood curdling mind blowing spine tingling scream that you've ever heard in your life and it cut through me like a knife and I knew that they were going to take me. I just knew it. And then the next thing I can remember is being levitated. Well, when I look in there, uh, I see two big eyes staring back at me. Hello and welcome. You're listening to The Bump Podcast, a place for the believers of the unexplained, monsters, and paranormal. Join us, and we'll go face-to-face -face with what goes bump in the night. Hey there, believers. I got another good episode for you today. Uh, this week, I'm bringing on Richard. We've been talking back and forth quite a bit um, through Facebook Messenger for the, the podcast page. And he's got a lot of stuff he wants to unpack about the Pacific Northwest and what's going on. And it's not your Pacific Northwest stories that you're used to hearing. Uh, I'm very interested in what he has to say and what he's experienced himself firsthand. So I will bring him on to do so just as soon as uh, he, he gets that invite link. In the meantime, just a, a quick recap of what's going on with the show and stuff. There is a P.O. Box for the podcast. Let me see. It is P.O. Box 1453 at Chapmanville, West Virginia, 25508. I got a P.O. Box for the show because, you know, Every once in a while, somebody wants to send something. And instead of having to send my personal house address, uh, I thought it would be wise to start sending a P.O. box. Um, some of my content people disagree with, and I don't want to get, you know, something sent to my my home. So a P.O. box is right there. Um, if there's anything you want to send, if it's like books for me to review or just read or whatever you want, um, swag, you know, other podcasts, other small businesses and stuff, send me stickers or something like that, and I'll send you something in return. That's fun. I've done that. Um, my buddy's from from the shadows. We, we've done that. Uh, probably some others, but let's see. Just just whatever. You know, if you feel like sending something or whatever, that's, that's fine. There's a, there's a safe place to send that to. That's uh, P.O. Box 1453, Chapmanville, West Virginia, 25508. Also, Patreon has been suspended. I'm trying to shut it down, but that doesn't have that feature anymore. They just have like a pause. So what I've done, I've stopped Patreon. I've moved the membership stuff over to thebumppodcast.com. You go to the homepage, scroll down, and there are there is a believers only button to, to sign up with. It takes you to the, the membership page. I try, to, I try to add content to that as often as possible, just a little something extra. There's going to be bonus episodes coming. There's going to be, uh, you know, just behind the scenes stuff. Like I'm going to Mothman Festival and stuff like that, probably before this even airs. Um, but there's, there's things going on that I like to do that I want to bring you guys in on that, you know, will be available to only members, including the Bump Hotline. There's a, uh, a phone number. It's, I, I got a cell phone line just for, the podcast so people can leave voicemails we can get in a group chat um group texts whatever uh, just something fun to do it's like a direct line and if i'm available you know I'd, i'll just answer the phone or whatever we, we got to do um it's just more fun on top of the bonus stuff so check it out oh it's only a dollar 75 per week which is i found out less than a candy bar per week um it's less than a cup of coffee per week. Okay, so sign up to that. If there's a guest that you want to hear, 
you know, that's going to be like a members only thing or if there's some bonus content that you know, you see online on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok that you want to get on there and check out, jump on there, sign up to be a member, get all the content you want, jump back off. I don't care. You know, it's just something for you to do and without having to pay like seven bucks a month up front kind of thing. All right. Um, let's see. I think that's about all I have for now, except for, you know, just thank you. The, the show is growing quite a bit. Um, I'm always looking for sponsorships. So if you have, if you, you know, you've got an idea you want me to sponsor, you know, you don't want me to, to plug your show or, or your brand or whatever, you know, holler at me, let's work something out. As long as it's you know, something that I can get behind, you know, I'm not just going to, you know, this ain't about getting rich. It ain't going to happen but it's about helping each other out, you know? So all right, me with that. And let me go ahead and bring Richard on to the show and we'll get this going. Hey, how's it going? Go so, on. uh, my name's Richard. I live in a uh, Washington state kind of Southeast area near Hanford, Washington. We'll just call it that area, I guess. Um, Hanford's kind of the home of a nuclear, or I think it's nuclear test facility slash, um, they just, they have a whole crew. It's like literally its own town strictly for that nuclear test facility or whatnot. But, um, that's kind of where the story goes into because, so I don't even know where to begin. Let's start with when I was a kid. Yeah, um, I always, my mom always told me about like the paranormal and how my grandma was kind of into this. I don't even remember the word for it, but she had this thing where she believed that if you had a dream three times, that that dream would come true. And she also had, uh, a really deep feeling with numbers and like bad numbers and good numbers, what have you. And uh, she told me one time, my grandma did, and I remember this specifically because it was my baseball number was six. And she told me one of the bad numbers is six and the other one is 23. Hmm. And, you know, I thought not much of that. And uh, so as I'm growing up and stuff like that, I'm, going out doing stuff with my friends what have you and there happens to be a time where we have six people in a car it's june 23rd of 06 i believe i'm 16 and we're swimming at a bridge where my mom used to like swim and drive over and stuff like that and uh we're driving back and it's just I just got this gut feeling in my stomach. I don't know what it was, what caused it, what have you. But uh, we ended up crashing that day. And uh, I broke my back mm -hmm. in a few spots. A um, bunch of my friends went through quite a bit. Um, the driver of the car ended up passing away at a later date due to cancer. So, I mean, just that whole situation with the numbers and stuff like that. That's what kind of sparked my curiosity with that line of stuff, that line of thinking, the paranormal, the what if, you know, there's more to it kind of deal. Yeah, man. So, no the reality behind it all, right? Right, right. Scary. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of how my interest sparked. And then shortly thereafter, we started going ghost hunting, me and my friends, you know, just we have a quite a few places over here where we live we have the monkey cages and the fruit you know there's house after house or whatever and uh one night in particular we're going out to the monkey cage house and we get out there and you get thistles in your shoes and your socks you know stuff like that right. and we don't see nothing we nothing all night and uh I'm getting pretty irritated because I put money into the gas tank. You know, we're young. We don't have a lot of money. Right. And I'm upset. <laughs> so we get in the car and we try one more spot. And it's this place called the Cash Hollow. And I put my feet up on the dashboard. And as we're driving through Cash Hollow, I'm talking crap. I'm mad. You know, like, 
you know, this is a waste of my time, blah, blah, blah. And I start thinking, you know, whatever. And then I get this gut feeling again, like similar to right before the crash. And uh, it all of a sudden, just like the car started slowing down. My I look over at my buddy. He puts it in the first. He's still going. You know, it's a gravel road. And he's still giving it gas, still lugging down a little bit. But then all of a sudden, I look back at my friend. And as soon as I look back, there's a scream. Like just a ear. I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's, we tried, so my buddies tried to recreate it one time with like mixing of like a death metal band and a wall. I think it was a seal or a walrus. It was a, it was a weird sound, but that's about the closest we got to it. And um, when we got out of there, like everybody just, I shut up. Everybody was quiet. We sank down in our seats we were, you know, we were scared. Like I'm still shaking, you know, like yeah. years. Ago. And um, when we get out, of the when we all get out and stuff, we got to discussing, and it sounded like, you know, it was right by my head in the window. And then my buddy's like, "No, it was by mine." And then, you know, there's four of us in the car. Yeah. All of them can vouch. You know what I mean? Like they heard the same thing I did. <laughs> yeah, it just blew my mind. So, wow. you know, it's just little things like that that you know it's you don't get to tell people about this because it's not the norm right you know like i'm nervous even talking on this podcast where it's like this is what you guys talk about yeah this, yeah this is what we do man <laughs> this is what we do. I, I got a question already yeah um, you you know you live out there in the pacific northwest when somebody says that term First thing anybody in this circle thinks of is going to be Bigfoot. Right? Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. So this and, scream, but this guttural <laughs> scream, did it sound like a Bigfoot type? So experience? It, and that's something that I thought about for sure. And like, but the only thing that would be confusing about that is the area in which it in is more farmland. Okay. But like, as you're going up, there's a lot of wood, I guess. There's a lot of woods off to the right hand side, but yeah. at, like it's just like a ditch, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's farmland off to the right. And I mean, that, I've heard nothing else like it. Nothing like, right. like I've said, I've tried mimicking it via computer. You know, having friends do that for me. It's nothing I've ever heard. So it it certainly could be that the closest thing that I could think of was like it messing with us it almost felt like it was messing with us with the car slowing down and stuff like that and when i heard about like skinwalker ranch and stuff like that how it messes with you yeah that's kind of what it felt like you know but i obviously it's not going to be something like that i think it'd be more like a big foot right well, if still, I had to, but, it was it's it was scary man like and i messaged my friends right before we got on and um i wanted to verify you know like i'm not just remembering this myself you know because like that's not, it kind of threw me back i tried to forget about it i was like that didn't happen that's not real you know yeah and uh i messed with my buddies and yeah i got it back and they still try to give me explanations as to what it could have been yeah. and i'm like there's no way dude. <laughs> like one of them said a cougar i was like dude the <laughs> cougars are not they sound more like a house cat than that dude like man you know that's wild, man. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. And Sorry everybody, it felt like it was in everybody's <laughs> ears too, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the part that, like, scared me. It wasn't even like it was just right by my ear. It was like it engulfed the car. Like, it just yeah. routed the car with this whole sound. It was the weirdest. Wow. It was crazy. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just because it was so loud that it did that. But, like, it was loud enough to, like, where you duck and you cover your ears because it's so sudden and frightening and like ear piercing you just poop, you know yeah. so when i <laughs> yeah it was frightening because right when i looked back my buddy was ducking down because i heard it at the same time but, <laughs> but yeah and then um the hamper thing that's the part that like struck me as odd lately because again i have another thing that like I experienced as a kid so this one I can't really put truth behind it 
mm-hmm. because I, again, I can't really verify. I can't even remember who I was with really. Like I remember one buddy, but I haven't really talked to him in a long time. You know what I mean? So we're coming back from riding our bikes. One buddy got a flat tire from puncture weeks and uh, we're going by our friend's house. And as we're going by our friend's house, there's this tree. And right before we get past this tree, we all feel like this hum, this like low, you know, and my hair stand up. And I, we both all, me and my buddy look up first. And then my other buddy looks up after. And he's look, we're looking at this thing. And it's like, I don't even know how to explain. It's, it's blue. It's like the sky blue, almost like, um, like a clear. I thought it was silver reflecting the sky is what I thought it was like that shiny of a metal, I guess. And it was an elongated shape, just a really no windows, no nothing, just an elongated silver cigar shaped thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I put that behind me a long time ago. And, uh, just recently this guy took some pictures out at Hanford of a UFO and that blue that you see in that picture is that blue that we've seen that day. Mm. Like, that's, like, I've, it's like an electric blue that you, I don't even know how to explain it. It's really bright. If you've seen it up against a bright blue sky, you wouldn't really be able to see it, you know what I mean? Right. So, it's, it's pretty crazy. Right. And, and then, so that hit I'm sorry. It I'm was sorry. pretty big. So, the, the thing was, is like, that's the part that I put it away in my thoughts because yeah. it couldn't have been real, right? Because this thing's 100 feet away. It's huge, massive. Like, I'm talking a football field, oh my you God. know, in the sky just floating. And there's no way. <laughs> there's no fucking... I'm, excuse my language, but... Oh, yeah, you're good. I've never seen anything like that. Maybe it was my imagination or all three of our imagination, you know, but... <laughs> you know better than that, man. You know, you know three yeah. people. That the whole term mass hallucination, that yeah. that's a made up <laughs> term. Like that that can't happen. All like multiple people aren't going to see the exact same thing. Yeah, and you know, and these are just stories. You know, the to most people, and I'm I, I, if you like them, cool. If you don't, then it is what it is. But the thing, the reason I'm on here is just because I don't get to tell this. You know, to anybody, right. I'm like literally shaking because I don't talk about it much. You know, like this is it. Something I get to talk to my lady, my mom, you know. Yeah, man. I didn't want it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm even going to tell mom on here. You know, <laughs> like you know, being crazy or something. But look, I appreciate you talking about it. You know, and I, I, I always encourage people to to just say it because it's going to bring somebody else out that that's going to finally be able to just say it to. You know, right. that's happened so many times, man. I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things that like I've had these experiences and I feel like it was more when I was young, when I was more open to the idea, when I was more accepting, Hey, there could be something, but you know, after telling maybe five people about this story and receiving the feedback that you get, you don't really want to believe it in yourself. You know what I mean? So you just kind of throw it off to the side and go on and, I think you kind of lose that belief, you know, it's yeah. like not Santa Claus belief, but it's a belief, you know, and I feel like that has something to do with it all. Yeah. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. People have a way. Uh, they, they might not even mean anything mean by it, but when somebody clowns you for something that you've experienced that you're already upset about and, and you're already nervous about talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in any disbelief will just dash your hopes of being taken yeah, and pushed away, man. Yeah, it's definitely like one of those. But the thing is, is when you have the people to back you up, mm-hmm. that's when it helps. You know, it's like you have the story, but you also have the people that have that same story, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if how long you listen to the show or not, but my dad and I, we we shared a UFO experience. On the the day I was coming home, uh, the day I separated from the Air Force, he was he come down and helped me out, picked me up, 
and was driving me home. We left from Louisiana and drove straight into West Virginia. And we we saw it together. And that was in 2009. People laughed at us, man. Like, of course you did. Of course you and your dad did. You you know, you guys like this stuff. Of course, that's what you think you saw. I I promise you. We, <laughs> you know, we... we, we You're right. Theory. And it's like you even though they don't believe you know yep. in your you know deep down that hey i've I seen that whether you believe it or not i i know i've seen it and i have proof with my dad and that's all i need you know yep. it's, but it's still something you don't really i don't really talk about too much i try not to yeah. just because you know my uh girl's family is super christian and yeah <laughs> you know, you know a, lot, a lot of christians are like that they're like they're so yeah. shut off to that stuff uh, um, these guys are very open for the most part, you know what I mean? But yeah. as far as aliens, I haven't even tried to bring it up with them. <laughs> you know? It's just right. not on my list of things to do today. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty safe. Yeah, man. yeah, I'm a teacher, right? I'm not going to go in there and talk to the principal and the, you know, or the dean of like, you know what I saw, you know, yeah. like, you, know you got to know your audience, you know what I mean? Right. And then, um, so the, the one other experience that I had was the one that really tripped me out because it was me and my cousin dylan sorry to jump into it just oh no, no, uh, no, no i appreciate it oh and i wanted to say thank you for your service by oh, the way i didn't get to say that to you yet well, thank you for your so, support man. yeah no problem um anyways me my cousin and my buddy daniel uh, daniel's um i'm not going to give last names no. but in mine also that uh was in the car with me the night of the screen and so uh mm. This was actually prior to all that. And so we have an explanation for this one. And it it was verified, you know what I mean? Like, in a sense, to us, it was verified. We're sitting there and we're at my cousin Dylan's house just down the road from mine. And um, we're talking about God and the devil. We're young, you know, middle school, probably just discussing what we think, how we feel, Um and we start, my cousin actually starts talking about the devil and like how he, he hates him. And, you know, like, just like I was doing that night with the scream, it kind of, now that I think about it, like it, we were talking crap about it, you know, it, just sitting there talking and um, all of a sudden we hear boom and the lights go off. Whoosh. Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't get out of his room fast enough, man. <laughs> we piled up at the door. There's three of us scrambling out you know it's just us at his house and we run from his house all the way down to my house and my house's lights are on everybody else's lights are on i guess wow. just that block just so happened to get hit by a a rock quarry hit a transformer and blew out the power in that block at that time mm. so it's pretty mm. it was just coincidental i guess but it just it freak the hell out of me man we're out of the house so quick yeah man. i'm not one to believe in coincidences but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you can say that you can call it one that's true wow yeah it was it was pretty scary thing man because i mean we were talking about it for a good 10 minutes before that had happened so yeah yeah i i it's have sudden. something so similar that i i have not shared on this show in in almost three years when we first moved into this house, uh, I've never told anybody. I told my wife, and this is it. Okay. Uh, when we first moved into this house, we kept hearing noises and stuff, like, you know, banging on the walls. And it's like, it's brick wall outside, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. sh you shouldn't hear anything. You shouldn't be here. Yeah. And and things, brick. You know, things bouncing around in the attic, and there's nothing in the attic, you know? And I go up there, and I look, and there's nothing in there that's moved. Just weird stuff when we first got here. So... I caught the house empty, you know, and I, I go into the living room and I get down on my knees up against the recliner and I start praying, you know, for, you know, if there's anything in here, you know, for it to be, you know, rebuked and to, to leave. And it was right then my power popped and the power went off of my house. Um, and this is at a new house that you just moved yeah, into. Yeah. Brand new house. Well, it's an old house, but Brand well, I mean, in. yeah you know what i mean unless you got some guy hiding in the attic i mean there should be no noises right, right. like that at least right. not loud yeah I mean, it was crazy loud it's not like people fighting or something almost um but yeah I'm, I'm down there and i'm praying and then bam power goes 
about 30 minutes later, the power company comes up here. A squirrel had ran down the power line and jumped onto the transformer and blew it. It was like... As you're uh, in the attic. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, you know, like... How, how did all that happen? And why did it happen at the exact time? I said, you know, if there's anything in the South, any evil spirits, you know, for them to be gone. It's like something jumped into that squirrel and committed suicide or something. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna help this guy out. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. But, yeah, that's my, that's that's my power out. outage story. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I, I have friends, family that, you know, there's a few select people that I talk to about that kind of stuff. Like my aunt, she was really into it, so... My cousin Becky and stuff like that. I mean, I'm dropping names. I shouldn't be because it's all right. Uh, <laughs> you don't give last but, uh, names, so <laughs> right? Right. Uh, yeah, they. My whole family's had this thing with the paranormal and stuff like that. I'm more. I've been more into like the alien and stuff because you know we have science. It's tangible. It's you know it's something we can prove most of the time, and right. science says that we should have life out there yeah. right and with this you know with everything that's being as old as it is as vast as it is you know like it's uh drake's equation right i don't know or i think it's drake's equation and uh there's another one too but it basically is they're out there just where are they you know what i mean like yeah it's it's baffling to think that we haven't been visited but i honestly feel like something's going to happen here soon with you know the um government releasing the videos and it just seems like i feel it you know like something's happening something's going that way so yeah. i'm yeah. here for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am too i would to hear what they you know they say it is that's the, what's going on I want to hear more because now they're saying that it's a threat to security. Right. Yeah. I just heard that too, just recently. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and they also have came out and said that it's unworldly too. Like right. they have literally stated that it's not of this world. Yep. And I mean, this is government officials saying this stuff. Like we're not into, we're not in this, the age of doubt anymore. There should be no doubt in anybody's mind at this point that right. there's something here or there or out there. You know what I mean? There has to be. Yeah. I mean, when in history has the government ever said, yeah, we don't have control over this? Right. You know, right. Like, right. this is out of our exactly. hands. You know what I mean? This is, yeah. And they're telling us about it too. Yeah. You know, if they've ever had something where it's kind of gotten away from them, I don't think they'd tell us much about it. No. Unless it's something they just can't do anything about at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good point. You know, and it seems to really be more active in the areas of, you know, nuclear test sites and facilities of that nature. I've heard stories of them uh, flying over a base and shutting off all the missiles or something of that nature. Yeah. You know? yeah. In England, oh. they did that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. And that's why, you know, Hanford's so intriguing over here, you know, I don't think it gets talked about enough. I don't think, you know, because not a lot of people out here are going out to Hanford to, you know, take looks, you know, not a lot of people out this way. I, I haven't really found a community in the sense of like UFO extraterrestrial out this way, you know what I mean? Right. And I've looked, yeah. you know, I've looked, but. And, you know, other than the stuff you sent me, I had never heard, like, I never heard of anything in Hanford. I I didn't know there was a nuke center or anything like you know facility yeah. out there. Yeah, uh, it was all new to me. And I you know it's exciting. So once yeah, you, I tell, mean, tell me about what uh, what's going on, man. I honestly think that because I I if I don't if I remember correctly, recently we had a leak there, not too long ago actually, like a couple of years ago, and ever since then I've had you know friends from over in that area tell me hey dude i seen because they know they can talk to me about it you know right. I'm, yeah. again one of the only people they know or i know them you know yeah. and uh they'll hit me up and they say hey dude we're seeing lights over here blah 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 um you know i've had pictures before but 
you know, phone after phone. It's been a couple of years since I even got a picture from anybody. And it seemed to be, it was more active when that leak was around. You know what I mean? Like add friends over in that area, like, hey, something's going on, something's going on. And whether it be from the leak itself, I don't know if that can cause radiation lighting or something. I don't know how big of a leak it was, how powerful it was, right. you know. But with that being said, you know, multiple people, multiple things. And now finally it's made it into at least a news article, you know, yeah, with the one I sent you. So, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that that light, the blue light that that picture was taken of, that's yeah. what tied it into my story. And, like, that's why it kind of, I needed, or I didn't need to, but I wanted to say, hey, people need to start looking at that. You know, look at towards Hanford and don't just, you know, <laughs> blow it off. Because I think something's going to, it's going to get more active over there. I yeah, just, man. I'm not psychic or anything like that. I just... It's going to. I just feel it. I just yeah. it has before, and it has. It is now, and so. So what else happened over there before? Like, for I, I will share the the articles and links and stuff later. The um, only article I've been able to find, like the that's the most recent one that I sent you, was the guy had seen some lights. He took some pictures of them, um, and that's that's it right now i can try and see if i can find some of the pictures that my friends have sent me yeah you know of the lights and what have you and uh send them to you as soon okay. as i can you know I'll probably know. right after we get off this thing yeah. yeah that'd be great but i mean as far as my experiences go like i i don't really want to get it like say too much about their experiences because i don't you know i can't sit here and say that what they saw was real, whatever the case may be. Right. I have some crazy friends, so I don't always <laughs> trust the basics. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I can appreciate that. <laughs> Been around a little ways, so. <laughs> but yeah, what what I see is what I believe usually. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, that that day with the the ship that I think I saw, you know what I mean. Yeah. the uh, the thing i remember the most is just that the feeling more than the the view of it it was just like the hair standing up it almost felt just like just like almost ensconced in like this electric field almost you know it right. was just a weird feeling really weird feeling so it was but, like, a, like a hum all right like, yeah like a hum but like it was almost like you couldn't hear it you almost felt the hum yeah you know what i mean yeah. it, it's hard to explain i guess but another thing that really piqued me back into all this was that bob lazar stuff and man that shit <laughs> my mind with the whole yeah. that when they found the um the hand scanner thing i don't know if you heard about that they found the hand scanner that he talked about yeah not really led me to believe that this guy was he's been there he's been not around stuff you know and yeah. but the only thing i question is is that he says they found these in old uh you know way back ancient like wreckage it could have been far back as ancient times it's wreckage is what they found All right it was given to them is what he said but if this technology so advanced like they say it is how do they wreck they just traveled across you know light years and shit so how did they wreck that right. was the part that kind of threw me back a little bit but who knows what if you know it was broken down and they just left it <laughs> so, yeah because <laughs> yeah, you know I, I try to make an explanation to myself about that yeah, one. stuff happens you know what i mean <laughs> right i left the car on the side of the road a few times you know? yeah man yeah, so, I've left one park before too. I'm I'm sure their technologies has issues too. So yeah, that's what all I could think about as far as like my biggest question with to that was how could they crash? You know, right? But, but you know, you you look towards science for these things. Let me ask you, what do you think that they are? Like, are they us from the future? Are they Visitors from another uh, galaxy. You know what? I, what's your angle? I at first I thought aliens from another planet. You know what I mean? That's what I thought. Yeah. 
and then you get into science like you were saying you know you start looking into interdimensional stuff because there's parallel universes there's stuff of that nature you know and whether it be them from a future parallel universe or you know what wherever they're from i think that's what it is it's interdimensional and they've found a way to open up these little wormholes that they can get through somehow you know what i mean yeah but why they're doing it i don't know (laughs) and what would be their interest in the nuke what would be their interest in the nuke stuff you know that could be it you know maybe we screwed up the planet in a few few years from now and they're coming back and they're starting to gear up for what can be this whole russia ukraine china issue you know what i mean all right all right good theories you know what i mean i dude there's so many out there it's hard to (laughs) track down the one you know but i think you're right on that one i think that's i mean because if they are from the future and they are interdimensional they have to live here too yeah right yeah if well they don't have to be from here i guess to be interdimensional but if they're coming back i would assume it's to save the planet that they also live on you right. know yeah yeah i held that theory for a long long time and it's just in the last i don't know year my mind's starting to change on that one too you know yeah what do you, what do you got what do you uh, in? well it's it's a it's a theory that offends everybody i think you know it it offends you know christian groups it offends uh you know hardcore science you know theory. i'm all for offensive man it's science <laughs> yeah i don't care what it is but, <laughs> yep, i i feel like at this point that we're looking at the days of noah i, I feel like these what we're calling aliens are celestial entities either something of the angelic order or the demonic order or both. Um, you know, cause in the Bible, they talk about in Genesis six, that there were these, you know, the fallen, these fallen angels, they come down and they took wives and they, their well, offspring were the Nephilim creatures. Nephilim, right. Nephilim yeah. Giant. And, and the whole game was to corrupt God's bloodline, you know, just corrupt, right. corrupt all the bloodlines until it, after seven generations, all was left was Noah and his family. Well, and it said the Nephilim were in those days and after. And here you have alien hybrid stories, you know, abduction stories. Uh, and if they've been around for that long, yeah, man. I mean, uh, I feel like you know, if they can, if they can travel time or dimension, then they should be able to pop in or out of any time. You know, because if time travel right. ever exists, then it does right now. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Well, and it's like there. I mean, time travel in a in a sense does exist. I mean, if you travel out from you know Earth a certain amount of time, time is going to move faster here on Earth than it right. is for you out there. Yeah. But you know, finding the way to go back is the big key, and I think if they could, if they found that, then I mean. That makes sense. I mean, because yeah. they were here prior and after, yeah. you know, yeah. and we haven't really seen them after. So <laughs> maybe they found the way, you know what I mean? Like, right. the thing is, is <clears throat> I don't think enough people give the uh, enough uh, validity to uh, Atlantis. I think Atlantis plays a part with a lot of the technology that, you know, could be in the future even, you know, like stuff that they did back then for the Neph, maybe the Nephilim had some con- you know who knows who knows right. Right. there's a lot of things that it could be like i can never pronounce it but the anti ethereum mechanism i don't know if you ever heard of that oh, they found wow. it in the ocean dude and it's from 800 or 500 bc what yeah and it's a computer or astrological signs like they they used it to find astrological things they could um predict eclipses with this thing See. and it was the first known computer that ever you know like and it, it shouldn't be it should not be you know and it's made out of metal and this is like before the metal time or metal ages you know yeah it's See, that, that lynn 
that lends credence for me as you know as a Christian that lends credence to these ancient beings you know these fallen that right. teach teach the secret sciences you know, yeah clergy and technology and all that you know they, they said to have had those those abilities you well know, it's like you know we lost a lot of information with you know, with natural disasters, the younger Dryas, you know, yeah. volcanoes, you know, there's things left and right that can destroy a civilization and their technology in a heartbeat, it wouldn't blink and benign, especially when they're closed off from the world, right? Say, you know, one like Atlantis would be exactly, you know? yeah, man. And I mean, the anti Catherium, I think, is how you say it mechanism. Now, this is, you know, 800 or 500 BC like right. before christ you know what i mean right so before and after with nephilim if that technology existed with that then i mean it's still kind of primitive primitive compared to what we have now right. but for that time it, it shouldn't exist at all exactly there yeah. there's no explanation for it at all right yeah if it's some kind of computer type it's thing a, it has gear it's made out of gears and it's like it's a bot it's crazy it's you got to look it up. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking it up. I, I, I wrote that one down. <laughs> yeah, that one I dug into a little bit. I, It's been so long since I remember. I think they found it in the ocean, obviously, uh, in a shipwreck or something like that. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's interesting. I learned something new tonight. I love it. I love it. Good. good. Well, is there, a, is there any other experiences you wanted to get into? I mean, as far as... Um, my experiences go that's that's really all i got um i just i wanted to give my opinion out there as far as where they're coming from what they are and i honestly think people should keep an eye out look up you know keep looking up because i think they're coming and if they're not already coming or if they're not already here they are coming i, I truly believe it absolutely 100 percent believe that they are here you yeah. oh. Now, who are they and what do they want? <laughs> Nephilim coming through. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, baby. <laughs> it makes sense, man. I got to look into that some more. The Genesis 6, right? Yeah, Genesis 6. It, it's Absolutely. really obscure. You know, there's, they just throw you a couple of lines there. But then if you... Yeah, well, like, that's how, that's the Bible for you, you know? And, yeah. and in essence, you got to, like, you gotta before... Be. Okay, even Christians will tell you, when you read the Bible, you have to read it more than once because you're not going to understand everything the first time through. Yeah. Never. You and just you can't, won't. you can't yeah, read okay. it like yeah. a book, you know. Yeah, no. It, things move around, and there's so many references, you know, right from, from beginning to end. It's and they the stories kind of mirror, you know. The, the, you can find patterns and stuff in there. It's like yeah, that's something true. will foretell something else, you know. And then yeah. there's like these uh, apocryphal texts, like the Book of Enoch. If you yeah. want to know about the Nephilim, yeah. get the Book of Enoch. There, right and there. that was a story that was taken out of the bible correct uh, i believe the book or, of enoch uh i believe was you like find stunned. it in certain bibles like uh okay. the ethiopian bible for whatever reason their version of the bible has a couple of these extra books in it you know? and that doesn't that involve like anunnaki and enoch or is that a different uh the, the anunnaki i think is a little different that's the uh so, Anunnaki were known to be tall, right? Big, giant, yeah, like creatures like Nephilim. Exactly, and that it, it was uh, ancient alien theory, right? Which and they kind of like this. You know, if if the Nephilim or what we call aliens now, then that would be ancient aliens, right? Right. But exactly. Yeah, it's all the same thing, man. <laughs> hey, I gotta look into this. It's kind of blew my mind a little bit there. Yeah, I, I heard about you on um, what was it? Sam Tripoli, actually. So I haven't. Yeah been listening too long but what i have heard dude i've enjoyed every minute of it so i'm gonna keep that. going with it and i appreciate you even taking the time to even acknowledge you know some of these stories as having some you know or even giving me a chance to say them you know because oh, absolutely a lot of platforms don't like that you know because the hate nowadays that you get from anything is just Oh yeah, sure, so. it, it don't matter what I put out, man. Somebody's gonna love it. Somebody's gonna hate it. Right, I, right. I come on here, and, and I mean, I can read can a recipe. Me, you know, and somebody get mad at me. So yeah, I'm not too worried about people hating me. I'm just worried about my family thinking I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gets but easier too. <laughs> they'll get over. It. They'll get over it. 
Hey, Richard, I appreciate you, brother. Um, I appreciate it. At any time, holler at me. Stay in touch with me on Facebook or whatever. and I'll go uh, digging around for some pictures, see if I can find them on this phone. If not, I'll have to find another phone of mine and see if I can find them on there or message some of the buddies. Sweet. So, all right. I appreciate you, man. All right, thank you. And, and thanks for night. your service again. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, good one.